continuing to talk about proof by induction, and we're gonna specifically focus on recursive formulas, okay? So I'm gonna do a, just do a specific example out and kind of take you through the process. Let's say I wanna prove using induction uh, that given this recursive formula, a n equals a n minus one plus, we have a mess over here, one over three n minus two, times three n plus one uh, is my recursive formula, okay? And what I wanna do is I want to find a, an explicit formula for this, and I wanna prove that it works via induction, okay? So my first couple terms here are gonna be, if you do out the math, and you're welcome to, are gonna be one and fourth, two sevenths, three tenths, et cetera. So you might be able to see here what our um, explicit formula is going to be. So this is recursive. Recursive. Writing in cursive for recursive. And our explicit is going to be uh, an is equal to simply n divided by 3n plus 1. Okay, and you can check this, right? Term one, we have one over fourth. Well, we're gonna check anyways. We're gonna prove it by induction, right? So the base case is n equals one, um, and we can check that. I have a one equals a fourth. Does it work here? Well, I have a n equals one over three plus one is a fourth. So a fourth is a fourth, we're good. So base case is proven. Now, what becomes harder to prove that this explicit formula works given the recursive is to prove that, now remember, what we're doing is we're assuming that a n is equal to n over 3 n plus 1, and we want to prove that a n plus 1 is equal to n plus 1 over 3 n plus 4, okay, where we sub n for n plus 1. And you might notice that here, I'm doing stuff with n and n plus 1. Right? And the trick for induction is to say, well, let's find a way to plug this, our assumption, into what we're trying to prove. But that's going to be tricky to do because over here I have an and an minus 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of, just like we re-indexed sums, I'm kind of going to re-index my recursive formula. So I'm going to re-index it to be a1 equals a fourth still. But this, I'm gonna actually change how I write it. It's gonna be a n plus one is equal to a n plus, and everywhere I'm adding one to n, right? So this n is gonna become an n plus one, and this n is gonna become an n plus one. So I'm gonna have one over uh, three n plus one times three n plus four. Okay, and now I'm gonna have an easier time. Because if I want to prove this, what I can do is say, well, I'm assuming that this statement here is true, right? So I can take it and plug it in here. And now I'm going to have n over 3n plus 1 plus 1 over 3n plus 1 times 3n plus 4. And if I can add these together and show that it equals what I'm trying to prove, then we're all set. So let's get a common denominator, and that's going to give me n, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 3n plus 4. Uh, so, sorry, the top and the bottom of the left side by 3n plus 4. So I have n times 3n plus 4 divided by, well, we have a plus 1 still, sorry. Plus 1 divided by 3n plus 1 times 3n plus 4. Well, I'm going to factor, not factor, distribute out the top. So I'm going to have 3n squared plus 4n plus 1, divided by all the stuff on the bottom. So then on the top, I'm going to have 3n plus 1, when I factor this, times n plus 1, uh, which means it's going to cancel out with the 3n plus 1 on the bottom. Which means now I can rewrite this as I can say, okay, well, this was all equal to a n plus 1, right? So a n plus 1 equals n plus 1, divided by 3n plus 4. And that's what we were trying to prove, right? That this is the same as this, because this came from this. So we did it. We're good. 
So this is how you do recursive formulas. Often it's gonna be useful if your recursive formula is defined in terms of n and n minus one to re-index it such that it's defined instead in terms of n plus one and n because that will allow for an easier substitution of your assumption statement into the statement that you're trying to prove.